Welcome everybody to this edition of Global Connections. I'm Jason Camillo. It's great to have you here. We've got an excellent session prepared for you. This is a, a really, really special edition. And before we get into the session, I just want to go over some basic rules. We are in Zoom. We're all in the same Zoom room together. So let's uh, adhere to some Zoom rules. Please keep your cameras on if you want. We don't want to see your faces, but you can keep yourself mute during the presentation up until we get to the question and answer section. And then, um, you know, you can open up your mics and have a conversation with our special guest today. And um, we are recording the session. There's going to be a lot of cool information shared. So you might want to go back and check this out later and we'll have it delivered. We'll have it available to you probably on our partners, the Rec Musica uh, website, but also on our Global Initiatives YouTube channel. So you'll be able to check that out soon. Um, before we jump into this, what I just wanted to do is uh, turn it over to my friend, my colleague, our partner, our Berkeley Global Academic Partner at Rec Musica in Mexico City. Um, we have Fernando Chavez here. Fernando. Um, tell us about Samana Rec and all the great things that's going that you're doing there at the school this week. You're muted, sir. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Jason. Uh, well, first of all, I want to thank everybody that is uh, it's here right now. I think this is going to be an amazing session. So, so it's great to see you here. Uh, as you many know, um, some of the students that are here. This is part of Semana Rec. Uh, we partner with Berkeley to have this session uh, along with them. And we are very happy to, to have this. We have been having a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, topics during the week with a lot of professionals, uh, musicians, uh, artists, uh, producers, uh, music, uh, people from the music industry. So it's been very, very nice. So, uh, Thank you very much for being here. And if you want, uh, if you have a question afterwise, afterwards uh, about uh, Rec, we can, you can ask for sure. Thank you very much. And thank you so much. And, um, you know, this is, a, you know, as we noted, this is a, a great opportunity for Berkeley College of Music and our partner Rec Music to showcase all the cool things that we do to connecting with all the great musicians around the world. And um, we do have a regular series um, that my colleagues and I have, my colleague Ray Soul, the Assistant Director of Global Initiatives is here. Also our um, team assistant, Cristela Sotomayor. She's a Berkeley alumna from Puerto Rico is here. And um, this is, uh, you know, we're, we're happy to connect in with you and share all the great things that we're doing. Um, I'm gonna throw some links really quickly in the chat and I'm hoping that you'll, uh, make a copy of these or bookmark them. This first one is, um, it's a Berkeley Global Academic Partners resource page. So for all of you students that are at Rec Musica or thinking of going to study at Rec or our other partners, grab that link. There's all kinds of great information there so that you can learn about um, the different remote sessions that we're doing. Uh, there's a lot of research sources online as well. And then, um, for those of you that are at REC and you're looking to come and study at Berkeley and you're gonna be transferring credits, you're gonna to wanna to bookmark this page. This is the credit transfer agreement. And so for all of you that are taking classes at REC, um, these are the classes that can transfer into Berkeley when you apply and get accepted. And um, we're hoping to see many more of you come to us in Boston soon. So um, be sure to you know keep tabs on all of that. So. Without further ado, let's jump into this very, very cool session. As all of you know, um, we're, all, we're all doing this. We're all using music technology in, in some fashion, but at places like Rec Musica and at Berkeley, we have incredible artists, faculty who are on the cutting edge. And today we've got a really special session um, with a Berkeley alum, someone who attended another Berkeley Global Partner School, our partner ICOM in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, so we get this global community here, right? And um, he's a fantastic composer, sound designer, live performer. And at Berkeley, um, for those of you that might not know, we actually have a new instrument, a new principal instrument a couple of years ago that we started called the Electronic Digital Instrument. So this is where you can use the most cutting edge te technology that's out there on the market as an instrument with your computer 
as you do when you're doing live performance and you can actually come and you know study that as your focus at Berkeley. So without further ado, um, I would like to introduce you to, and you can go and bookmark his site, follow him on social media, uh, but ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Mr. Rashan, uh, <coughs> sorry, sorry, <laughs> Rishab, Rajan. Rishab, thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you, thank you for having me. Um, I struggle with my name too, so no worries at all. Um, spent many years trying to figure out like, mom, what is this name you gave me? <laughs> so complicated. <laughs> Can you just call me the like, simple Indian name like Kumar or something like that, have it easier. But um, so um, I hope this goes well. Um, I have this quite a lot of technology being used here. And at the same time, we're trying to zoom transmit all this information through Zoom. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll start off with a little bit of a demo uh, and then I'll share my screen and explain what's going on here. Let me see if we're uh, good to get some sound going. All right. So I'm using the Mimu gloves over here. I'm going to talk about how these work. You can see there, I have them both on. And you're hearing some random triggers from me just moving my hands around and trying to activate, deactivate things on my computer. All right, so I'm going to change my headphones so I can listen to a metronome. So I'll play in time. I may not be able to hear you all for a little bit. Hopefully that uh, went okay. I'm just going to switch my headphones out so I can hear. All right, cool, cool. 
not bad it wasn't as bad <laughs> as i thought it might uh, might go but that was decent um all right so um let's now talk about uh so the camera here i'll try and face over here to talk about like what the what, what i was doing yeah so i'll share my screen so you all can see the software because i would say 80 percent of it is all software yes there's me moving my hands and doing stuff like this but the the computer is doing a lot of the heavy lifting so i'm going to share my screen the main program the music software that i'm using is ableton live you can see here that's that's the screen for ableton live um, ableton live some of you probably you know know this stuff it's a daw you can make music on it uh, you can perform live with this uh, so that's uh, where all the sounds are coming from. Uh, but the gloves, the gloves are acting like a controller, right? So you can see I have a controller here. It's like a, a little bit more of a generic controller. It has some buttons, has some sliders, has some knobs. These gloves are essentially the same thing, except they are wearable, right? So I'm just wearing these things. So when, as an artist, you know, you're performing live, you want to interact with your audience a bit more uh, rather than a lot of electronic performances tend to look like this. And you're like <laughs> in their thing, like doing a thing, and everybody's like, "What is that person doing on stage?" I don't know, but it sounds good. It must be, he must be doing really good. So it's it's a little disconnected, right? Electronic music performances. I don't know if you've seen that, or it's the exact opposite, where there's a person on stage jumping around and doing nothing because they're just playing a backing track, right? Very, very common for like big name acts, like DJs and stuff like that. And not even they're not even real DJs. They're just like pretending to be DJs, but they're really popular. They have to play their music, so they have to, you know just act like a DJ. A lot, a lot of big name producers end up doing that, right? They're not DJs, but they have to, like I said, act like act like being a DJ. So this is kind of a um, good middle ground where you are actually performing. You can see I'm triggering things by mistake. So everything I'm doing is actual performances. There's live looping going on here. I'm controlling things with these devices, but also people can see, like this is a very easy gesture to understand, right? It's like a, it's like a, like air drumming or what do you call it, like air guitar playing or something like that. So, and then you don't have to bend down and look at something. You can look into, look at the stage or look at the, sorry, look at the audience, interact with um, the audience. So, so it's a very unique way to perform uh, live with music. Now what's happening here is that um, the gloves. So um, it's not like proper gloves. You can see a little hole here because it's not meant to keep you warm. <laughs> it's just meant to sense any changes that you, um, I guess, create with your fingers. So on each finger, they, are, they have multiple bend sensors, They're little sensors on each finger, like two of them, uh, except for the pinky and the thumb, it just has one sensor, but the middle three fingers, they have two sensors. So it kind of really knows when you're bending it in like very precise way. And then the same thing happens on the other hand as well. There's also a little um, LED, you can see it's kind of pulsing. It's just a normal button that I can press to activate something or deactivate an effect or do something with it, kind of like a normal uh, button on a controller like this. Uh, aside from that, there's this big box over here. This has all the, the circuit circuitry, the circuit board. So this takes care of all the figuring out all this information, translating that into information that the computer can understand. So all that stuff happens. And it also has a little battery because it is wireless. When this technology came out initially, it was wired and it was like <laughs> all these cables dangling attached to your body. But this is awesome because it's all wireless now. Uh, so that's mainly the the technology. Um, now, how how is Ableton Live? Or how is the software understanding this? And I apologize if I don't look at the chat. Feel free to interrupt me. I can hear you all. So if you have a question, just uh, uh, just just say something. Um, yeah, I think we don't have a question in the chat right now. Um, I yeah, do. So I, I I have a question. Oh, there is a question already. Great. Yeah, please <laughs> go for it. Hi. It, it was amazing. Um, I just wanted to know if the Mimo gloves are uh, commercially available because I saw Imogen Heap use them, but I thought they were like this really niche kind of boutique technology. Are they being mass produced? Uh, yes, very, very good question. So I, I didn't go into the background of it. So yes, if you know of Imogen Heap, fantastic performer. She was the one who came up with this idea of these gloves and then she worked with a team of people to develop these initially it was just for her and then she had like a kickstarter campaign like many years ago and i say many maybe three or four years ago uh, but now it is officially available to purchase uh, memugloves.com um, when i say now i mean now in general but literally now it's out of stock because of like it says there on the website because of worldwide shortage of you know uh, these components um they 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 are backlogged so you, you cannot literally purchase it right now but it is um available for the masses 
I say that with take that with a bit of a grain of salt for the masses because these are very very expensive. <laughs> it's not like like this controller cost me hundred bucks. This one I I didn't pay for it. Thankfully, <laughs> I, I, if I had to pay for it, I wouldn't be you know I'll have to like skip food for like a month or so or maybe even more, <laughs> uh, not pay rent for a few months. Um, the school bought these, so our department we have a bunch of these. Uh, in fact, one one pair was actually given to us, so so yeah, even the school didn't pay for it. So yes, it is available, but at the same time, not really, because you can't buy it, and also it's very expensive, <laughs> All right? Um, but I can explain what's going on here, so if you ever in the future consider. When it comes to new technology, think about, uh, maybe you all can relate to this, I, I kind of can, uh, 4K TVs or 4K monitors, I remember maybe 2011, 2012, I heard about it and it was super, I forget wh what the price was. I was living in Malaysia, as Jason said, I lived there for a bit. And I remember it was way expensive and I was thinking one day maybe I could afford to buy this. Now think about 4K, that's normal. <laughs> 8K is a new thing, right? Everybody's like, I want that 8K monitor or whatever. So, so technology will get cheaper eventually. When it first comes out, it's gonna be insanely expensive. It will, it will come down eventually in price. Um, but yeah, so let me show you the, the actual brains of the operation, which is a software. So I'm gonna switch back my screen to this other screen here. So this is called Glover, the software. Here is where you translate all this information coming from the gloves into musical data that a DAW like Ableton Live can understand. Like note on, note off messages, CC messages, right? those knobs when you rotate. When you rotate a knob on a MIDI controller, it sends a CC message. So I could do this and generate CC messages. Um, note on, note off messages, like playing on your keyboard. Note on, note off messages. I, as an example, you can see over here, it says drum hit left plus fist left creates this particular note. So left meaning the left glove, right? So left, if I make a fist gesture and if I do this, I generate, and you can see it lights up and that little peak over there also um, shows you that that information goes through. And what's really cool is that it's very responsive. Uh, if you've ever used a MIDI controller in a bad situation or like with, with bad settings or incorrect settings, you notice that you play a note and then you hear the sound a bit later. It's, it's not quite, there's some latency issues. So with the technology like this, you would assume that there should be latency because it's firstly the super bend sensor stuff. There's a chip here that does some work and then wirelessly transfers over to the computer. The computer sends it to Glover, Glover then converts it to MIDI and then it sends it to Ableton Live and then Ableton Live plays a sound. So all that is happening but it's pretty fast and I don't know how well you you can see it on Zoom, but when I, if I do like, I have a two finger thing. So it's, it's pretty instant, right? Let me do the fist thing, which is the right hand and switch to the right hand. Uh, it lights up, so just, you know, so that's the one. And also aside from being very responsive, it's also velocity sensitive. I can play gently, crazy, <laughs> super loud. So if your instrument is responsive like that, you can perform responsively. So that's really, really cool. Um, yeah, that is insane. <laughs> um, what else? Um, let me show you some examples of how I've set this up. So that, that's the general thing. And I can give you a example of how to create something from scratch. I brought, bought the gloves, I open up something in Ableton Live and how do I, you know, just set up a very simple uh, sound. But before I do that, yeah, I'll give you a few more examples. Let's look at, um, oh yeah, there's a little silly thing I did as an uh, example, people love this one. It's um, DJ, oh wait, hang on, can't, so a DJ scratch effect. Uh, I think we all have heard that DJ scratch sound, the wiki wiki <laughs> stuff like that. I can't vocalize it, but uh, hopefully you can understand what I'm trying to say. I'll, I'll switch my, to make this easier, I'll just share my entire screen so I won't have to keep switching around. Uh, desktop, I guess. Yeah, so you should be able to see Ableton Live and maybe the Zoom also, move the Zoom thing out of the way. So that's Ableton Live here, and if I have the Glover, let me know if you can yeah, if you can see both things at the same time. Right, so the Glover thing is open. Yeah, that's uh, good. Cool. So I'm going to switch out the Glover. So I have all these presets saved. So in this Glover application, I have one for I think this is the one for the DJ Scratch. Don't save this one. Yeah, this is a very simple one. So I have a sound. I have a, it's slightly off screen here, but I have a regular keyboard MIDI controller. You can kind of see there, yeah? So I have a little keyboard MIDI controller. I have this, this sample here of noise. It's just noise. And I have another sample here. Bye. It's like a, a female singer going, why? Bye. Mm -hmm. right? Now, I 
can play that. I'm just playing it like a regular MIDI control. But what I did was, let me just double check if it's the right hand or the left hand, I forget. Oh, left hand. <laughs> All right, so on the left hand, this is going to be tricky. Um, with the left hand, if I make a fist, you can see what it says, right? Fist with the left hand and pitch is basically me moving my hand like this up and down. Yeah. So if I do that, something will happen. It's sending this uh, MIDI message over to Ableton Live. So let's see what would happen. Where is it? Moves up and so what's happening here is that there's a filter. You can see over here in Ableton Live, this tiny little knob here. You'll see how it moves when I move my hand up and down like this. Yeah, and I can shake it like crazy. I can go very gently. It's very, very responsive. Yeah, so that's uh, the filter cut off. And if I was to just randomly play that sample. If I do the vocal sample. Switch between the two, play a little beat. <laughs> so, so you can do like silly things like that. Um, so so that's that's a little example. Uh, I'll show you another slightly less funny example. Let's look at uh, this one. I just uh, thought of this last night. Um, so aside from doing this continuous controller things and doing drum hits, um, they also have this mode in um, in this Glover. So the Glover application is awesome. So th this is the thing that you know does all the fancy. Uh, translation of data of this this gestural data into MIDI uh, MIDI messages. So one unique thing you can do is you can just trigger an entire chord. So let me open this one here. Don't save this. So in this project, what I have done is uh, there's this device here which just triggers a chord. So you have to just basically create a specific gesture, and when that gesture uh, is created, the Glover application recognizes, oh, you're doing that. You're you're doing a pointing finger or you're doing a fist. Now I'll trigger a particular chord. You do another gesture, or I'll trigger a different chord. And you can see here, I think, uh, I'm forgetting which one is which. I think if I point, so this is all left hand. All right, so hopefully you can see that. So that's left hand, uh, one finger point. If I do a thumb like this, it switches. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking over here. So the chord has changed. You basically save chord presets. So you can say, if I do a one finger point, trigger this chord. Uh, the third third note was missing there <laughs> off screen. And if I do a like a hands up, you trigger this chord. And if I do a little thing like that, you do this chord. If I do two fingers, you do this chord. If I do uh, what else was it? I think fist, you do another chord. So I can basically go through a series of chords like this. And let's see if I could play this. So I just have a synthesizer here. This synthesizer in Ableton Live will receive those chords. I have a, a note repeat effect loaded in. So when it receives that chord, it'll just repeat that chord again and again rhythmically. So let's hear what that would sound like. Uh, we'll just make sure the track is record enabled. I'll also record it in like this. Okay. So, so that's one chord. Okay. Pointing finger like that. If I bring the thumb up, another chord. Two fingers. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> uh, what was the other one? The little kung fu, like yeah, the, the duck tapping thing, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and a fist. like a gesture like this. So 
you, you can <laughs> you get the idea, right? So stop, stop. All right, yeah. Um, going shopping now, yay! <laughs> so yeah, these are some examples of what you could do. Uh, I also do. There's another performance. It's a bit hard to display here, but I perform with my guitar. I'm a guitarist primarily. Play guitar. So when you're playing an instrument that involves two hands, guitar. Uh, I guess most instruments involve two hands, right? Piano, flute, trombone. Uh, maybe you want to quickly trigger something. You can't do that because your hands are busy. Uh, but then, you, I guess foot, foot controllers work. You can use foot controllers. But the nice thing over here is I'm playing guitar and there's a little switch right here. I can quickly tap that, that switch. I have two switches, one on the left hand, one on the right hand. If I just want to start the loop or stop the loop, a variety of different simple things like that. Mimu socks. Everybody says that. Whenever I talk about this in my classes, they're like, gloves are cool. How about some socks as well? Maybe uh, someone in Berkeley can come up with Mimu socks. Make music with feet, right? <laughs> For the people out there who are into feet, maybe. Feet music is what I meant to say. <laughs> Um, all right, so let me show you how this whole thing works from scratch, right? So these are all preset things that I was showing you. Let me show you how we would make something from scratch. So I'll do a new project in Ableton Live. Don't save this one. Uh, so I have empty project and then in Glover, I'll just do file new, new project. Don't save. All right, so everything's empty. So you, let's say you bought these gloves. Now, how do you, how do you set it up? So first you have to add the devices. So I'll add a left glove and then let's also add the right glove. And as long as the connections, I won't go over the connections, but as long as the connections are good, you can see here there's a little Wi-Fi icon, it's connected, and the battery is also good for now. Um, you may want to set things up. So if I select a glove, you can um, adjust its uh, sensitivity. So let me do the right, it's easier uh, to show on the camera. So these are all the bend sensors. You see these lines here? So there's two on these three fingers and only one on the pinky and one on the thumb. Yeah. So when I move my hands, you see how those sliders move? Yeah. But it's not moving, if you notice, uh, if you look at the, the index finger, it's not moving as much. It's kind of starting off at that 75 position and then it's going all the way up to 100 maybe. So it'd be nice if it goes lower because by default, it's not calibrated to use the entire range because everybody's hands might be different. So it's just, this is the default setting. Um, I will click on, I think it's this button here. Yeah, click on this button and it says, okay, close and open your hands slowly for about 10 seconds. All right, I'll do that. 10 seconds and then click okay i'll use my other hand to click okay is it 10 seconds should be 10 seconds hit okay oh look at that now you see that how it's it's actually detecting all the the range right and you want it to detect so all, all those minor little subtle changes you're making in your gestures it'll recognize that and you can use those uh, so okay that's done now uh, aside from just doing funny things like rock and roll and all that stuff with one finger or like bang bang and stuff like that yeah it also recognizes the three um, orientations. Uh, one is pitch. I was mainly using pitch for all the previous examples as well. So this is pitch. If I move my hand all the way up, you can see the pitch, the, the vertical slider goes all the way up, move my pitch down, it goes all the way down. So that's a nice, nice, I could use that to like make something go louder, or filter gets brighter, gets duller, things like that. And then there's another one called yaw. I love the term yaw, <laughs> especially Southern part of America. People like that word, I believe. So yaw is basically going like that. What's up, y'all? <laughs> right? So that's y'all. Uh, and then there's roll. Roll is, I imagine your hand is a little mini airplane. I mean, like, ooh, going left, going right, like that, right? So you can move your hand like this, you can move your hand like this, you can move your hand like this. Basically, 360 degrees. And also, it recognizes this little button here. You can tell it uh, to, to f you can tell it what is forward, right? So if I, if I face towards the camera and click here, so now it knows that this is forward. So if I'm, going here it knows that okay that's back or this is left and this is right so you can do a gesture where when i do the one finger point over here do something but when i do a one finger point at the back do something else or on the left so you have so many different options for you know like controlling more aspects of the music and then the drum hits i showed you like the, the three different ones i found in my experience there's this with the hand like this and there's one where you just flick your wrist like that because there's like a I think it's called an accelerometer or a gyroscope built in here, which which kind of detects those sudden movements. Uh, it's like your iPhone. Your iPhone also has that, also to kind of tell you where you are, like with your uh, GPS. Uh, I find like this drum hit to be the easiest to use. You just kind of do this, kind of like a karate chop. And the other ones I found like they're not very reliable. Um, but yeah, so that's those are all the different things. Okay, so let's create a particular scenario, uh, uh, what, the, what they call postures. 
So I would like they have some ch- suggestions, but you can k- come up with any funky looking thing that you can you can come up with, and you can tell this uh, the software that hey, d- I want you to remember this this funny looking thing I'm doing, and when I do this, you send a MIDI message or whatever, right? So one is fist, one is open hand. Puppet pu- puppet hand is the one like that. Right? It's okay. Let's do puppet hand. So right now, uh, this uh, this preset does not know what a puppet hand is, my puppet hand is like. So I need to. Uh, make it learn my puppet hand. How do I do that? I do the puppet hand and then I click. And I, I do it like subtle variations, maybe do it a few more times, click, click a few more times. They, they suggest about 10 times, click 10 times. You can either hold the same puppet hand or do subtle variations so it remembers, okay, that is your puppet hand and then hit the save button. And now it remembers that. It lights up yellow, letting it know, letting you know that it remembers it. But now it only knows puppet hand. It knows nothing else, right? You need to tell it other states as well. I usually use open hand for like nothing. Like when it's open hand, don't do anything. Because it's hard to, like, uh, you notice initially when, when I was speaking, random things were happening because <laughs> I'm moving my hands around. It's triggering sounds. So I tend to have open hand to do nothing. So I wanted to know what open hand is like. So I'll just keep my hand kind of open like this. And I'll click there a few times. So it knows, okay, that's open hand. And save. All right, so now if I do puppet hand, you see how it switches to puppet hand? And if I do open hand, it'll switch. And it's very fast. If you do it about 10, 15 times, it really recognizes the difference. Let's do a fist as well. So I'll do a fist, but it's confused right now. It's saying, you're doing a fist, but it looks like a puppet hand. So I'll go with puppet hand. But let's tell it what is fist. So this is fist. Click it a few times and save. So now, oh, so now it says, okay, I know that's a fist. And do puppet hand, that's a puppet hand. Do open hand. I was getting a bit confused there. All right, so it's, yeah, it's working now. You have to like troubleshoot a little bit, and you know th- these are machines. They're not like like when I say puppet hand, you all know what it is. The computer is like you know it just recognizes how the fingers are bending, and you're bending it slightly differently. It gets confused and it it won't do it. So you kind of have to like train the software. All right, so we've done a few of these things. Um, uh, I'll I'll explain that the pioneer thing. Um, Let's uh, let's finish up this connection. So so let's say with my right hand, I'm doing these uh, different gestures. So let's say puppet hand, and maybe the the yaw, right? The yaw. I would I would like to use the yaw. So if I do puppet hand and yaw, I would like to do something in Ableton Live. So back in Ableton Live, I'll just load an instrument. Let's say load this instrument. Uh, I'll just use my keyboard here just to play the sounds. This, this frequency uh, filter frequency which makes the sound brighter and duller maybe I would like to control that with my fancy new puppet hand so in Ableton Live there's a MIDI mapping um, mode that we can engage but firstly back in um, in the Glover software we need to set up that MIDI mapping so over here is where we set it up I can click on I to choose an input where is it? Oh, sorry, I clicked it twice. I wasn't seeing it. Delete the other one. Yeah. So this is an input. It's right now empty. So I will choose. This is the right hand, right? So I'll select the right hand. These are all the different gestures. Choose right hand. Uh, what did I choose? Posture, puppet hand. So let's drag this and drop it inside this empty MIDI mapping. Ah, damn it. It went over here. All right. Let's delete the previous one. So there you go. There's my puppet hand. But not just puppet hand. I want it to combine puppet hand with this movement to adjust the filter, right? So let's find that. I think that's under orientation, yaw. I'll drag that below puppet hand. So only when these two are happening, if I just do open hand yaw, nothing happens. But if I do puppet hand yaw, look at the slider there, the little white line and the yellow diagonal line. It's saying, oh, I recognize the movement and I, uh, I'm generating data. Now it's pretty wide. It goes all the way over here <laughs> and then all the way uh, over there, right? So I don't need such a wide range, right? Maybe on stage, there's actually kind of, uh, there's some dancers who perform with music who kind of use this. Uh, so it makes sense to have that kind of wide range, but I don't need such a wide range. So let's say I want to start lowest over here and then click set minimum. So that's going to be the lowest. And then maybe maximum over here, right off the camera, set maximum. That's it. So now, uh, the yellow line is still small, but look at the white line. The white line is the actual MIDI message. We have this nice wide range that I'm controlling just within this small area here. So you can be very customized like that, be very specific what you want to do. All right, cool. We've set up the input. Let's set the output. So you have to create like this virtual cable here, connect it. 
Uh, it says empty ma mapping output. You can use all these different messages. The most obvious, most straightforward one is MIDI. So I'll add a MIDI message. It says drop output here. Drop that in. By default, it will choose CC. CC stands for continuous controller. Those are like the knobs that you have on mi uh, MIDI controllers. So we'll use that message. It's on channel one. It's CC number 20. There are like 128 different CCs on each channel. And there are 16 channels. So 16 times 128, whatever that number is. That, that, those many different messages we could use if you wanted to if you can remember. <laughs> All right, so I'm using CC uh, number 20 on channel one. In fact, I don't have to worry about that. I just need to go to MIDI mapping mode in Ableton Live. In Ableton Live, I'll click in the top right corner here, MIDI map mode. I'll click on the parameter I wanna assign. And uh, yeah, I was already, you know, my hand was moving, so it recognized it immediately. You can see that it says one slash 20. Over here also it says CC 20 is going to control that parameter. So now, if I play some notes, and nothing's happening with my hand is open, but if I do the puppet hand, I can control it. And you can be very, very, like, you shake your hand and it shakes along, right? And you can be very smooth. Very, very responsive. Yeah, so that's, that's basically the, the process to create um, a MIDI mapping. Um, any questions here? So the question about the Pioneer. So yeah, the software is really nice. It's very simple, the interface, very simple. It doesn't have like fancy graphics and all, but um, very fa fairly intuitive to use. Uh, so Pioneer, I believe, I haven't researched it much. So um, if we look at Glover in the device list, these are all the devices it supports from Mimu. And these are this is a device called um, Leap Motion from Ultra Leap. There's some OSC device and micro bit and other. So there, you don't have to use these super expensive gloves with the Glover software. You can use any of these other devices. In fact, I would say the cheapest way to get into this world is to use Gliss. Gliss is a free uh, iOS application that you can download on your phone. And because your phone also, you can hold your phone and move it up and down. It'll, it'll recognize that because your phone has that same accelerometer. So you can use your phone instead. Uh, you, you can't just do the gestures. They, they have like a touch thing on the phone. You can kind of touch on the phone and you can use that to control things. So that's an easy way to get into it. Uh, but, but Glover is not free. So you have to pay for Glover. <laughs> so um, Glover costs, I think, $150. And I'm sure they have academic discounts. You know, usually with companies uh, that sell software, even if their website doesn't say it, I'll always email them. Hey, I'm... Uh, when I was a student, I would say, hey, I'm a student. I would be, like to get your software. And now, even though I'm a teacher, I'll say, I work at this university. Do you have any kind of academic pricing? And usually they will be like, yeah, sure. Here's you know 30% discount or whatever. So always good to exercise your <laughs> freedom of being a, either a student or an educator to, to get discounts, right? Um, so yeah, so that's, um, that software is a paid um, paid program. But all these uh, devices, yeah, you'll have to buy if you want to uh, use it with mm, uh, Glover. This is a fairly cheap device, Leap Motion. Leap Motion is like a very small uh, little device that you put on your table. It's about, it's kind of the size of a very small, like those modern hard drives that are super tiny, like, like a flash drive, like maybe slightly bigger than a flash drive. Uh, you just connect it via USB to your computer. It's basically a camera, an infrared camera, and you put your hand uh, in front of it and it'll detect your hands, it'll even detect your fingers and um, it comes with, you don't even need to use it with Glover, it by itself comes with an entire app store, you can kind of just buy games, you can buy MIDI controller software that you can use to do stuff like this, uh, very interesting and I, I remember I, I bought it ages ago, I have it somewhere in my apartment, I don't know where it is right now, but um, it came out in 2011, 2012 or maybe 2013, I purchased it around that time. Um, very easy to use um, and it was about 70 80 dollars it was like a Kickstarter campaign initially and now you can just buy it from uh, some online store so that that's a fairly easy way to get into this whole gestural kind of control uh, the uh, leap motion controller and then I'm not too familiar with these other devices you can check out micro bit so there's one from pioneer as well uh, there is a little bit of a difference in the gloves from the ones that are labeled pioneer versus the Mimu gloves but it's still an actual glove thing that you'll have to purchase. Um, so yeah, so that's basically how it works. Uh, let me show you this one thing I haven't explored much, but it's like a fun little feature. So um, I showed you the chord mode, but there's also, um, uh, I think it's a note matrix. 
is the so sorry this was the card mode i think the other one the card machine wait i'm confusing myself i think it's the first one what is this one this is something else yeah it's the note matrix so what does the note matrix do it kind of creates so so let's say i'll tell it i would like you to play the note c e g b flat and d uh, I can tell it, okay, how long the notes should be in terms of time in milliseconds. So that's about one second. Let's make it a bit shorter. Let's say 500 milliseconds. You can assign the velocity and stuff like that. Um, and this can be controlled by whatever you want, right? So let's control this with that same puppet hand gesture, let's say. Uh, I'll delete this one here so this doesn't get... Uh, or let's, let's do another one. I've done puppet hand for this. Maybe I'll do the fist because I, I told it... Uh, I think I did do fist. Yeah, it, it knows fist. So let's add, again, for the right hand, let's add a fist under posture. Where's fist? I'll add fist. And let's add under orientation. Let's, let's do another one. So we did um, yaw. Let's do roll. Put that in there. I'm not sure roll will work well with this. Let's try it out. Maybe uh, it's kind of silly to do roll. Let's do, um, let's do pitch. So now what's happening is, let's give it some reverb so it sounds nice. So when I do that fist and I move my hand up or down, it triggers the notes. So you know what, let me do this with the left hand. I'm gonna just swap this out. Uh, I can't just swap it out. I need to go to the left hand and do it again. All right, so <laughs> I'll delete this one, delete this one. So I'll do left hand uh, pitch and left hand fist. But I think I've not told it what that is yet, right? Yeah, I haven't even done the, the thing here. So let me quickly do that. Click over here, bend my hand so it knows the, the range. So a little bit of setup required. You need to do this, obviously, not before the gig, <laughs> well before the gig. And then when you save the preset, it'll remember everything, yeah? So it knows that. Let's do open hand real quick. I'll just do a normal open hand here. Save that. Let's do fist. Let's do fist. And, oh, I forgot to save it. Save. And let's do puppet hand. It's 10 times, save. All right, so it knows open hand, it knows fist, it knows puppet hand. So what I'm going to do back to my my this little chord machine here. Uh, we'll use the left hand pitch and fist. Right, to play the notes. Let's see here. And with the right hand, I can adjust the filter. Did I delete that, the filter? Is it still working? Oh, it's, it's like this, sorry. I forgot what I was using, right? So, uh, what was it? Yeah, this, right? So that's the chord and this is the filter frequency not the best combination because <laughs> my hands are crossing over <laughs> so i should have chosen a better combination yeah but basically it's working right so you can see how i'm um, adjusting or triggering the notes of the chord with one hand and i'm adjusting the filter with the other hand so um, yeah so that's um, the other little feature there but aside from that, it's all the same thing. It's basically based off of all these orientations and postures, directions, uh, the drum hits thing I showed you early on with the little the Indian demo, the Indian song there in the beginning. It uses uh, that. Let's see, is there anything else? Um, maybe we can open it up to questions at this point. Are there any questions? I was wondering if you can use this in, in other DOS, like Logic or whatever. Uh, pro tools or things like that yeah absolutely because all that's happening here is that we're generating midi messages and all daws understand midi messages so yeah absolutely you okay. can use it with logic pro tools any daw that has that right because as long as you have glover because right? glover will convert all this this information into midi messages okay um yeah rishab and this is this is fascinating to see and um could you talk a little bit more about what you're teaching at Berkeley and are you utilizing this in any of your classes or ensembles? Um, it's still early days. Um, so I bring it in to my classes uh, to demonstrate, to, to show students the technology, uh, how it works. And since those classes are in person, they get to try it out themselves. Uh, we have three pairs. Uh, they, they come in three different sizes, large, medium, small. So we have you know, one, one of each. Um, 
In terms of using it for classes, not yet. Uh, we are planning to have an ensemble next semester in fall um, uh, that I'm running that uh, I'm planning to incorporate this somehow or the other. The problem is, you know, uh, getting students gloves. We, we can't give it to them to take it home or whatever. So they practice stuff. And also, even if we could do that, they don't have access to the software because the software is paid, right? You have to pay for the software. So we just have to figure out how to deal with that. But we are, uh, at least I am planning to use this for my ensemble upcoming in fall. Hopefully, hopefully it yeah. turns out good. <laughs> no, I'm sure. And then, you know, for, for some of the folks that are connected here, um, you're obviously highly skilled um, with this technology. Debatable, but what sure. would be some things that, that you would say to somebody who's just getting into maybe exploring MIDI, exploring Ableton, you know, what would be some ways that they could kind of practice some of the fundamental techniques of just getting, you know, a controller of some kind to, um, to function the way they wanted to with their samples, with their sound libraries? Yeah, absolutely. I, I wouldn't recommend if you're brand new to this, I wouldn't recommend going out and buying these expensive gloves. Uh, it, it's kind of, you kind of need to need to understand some basic of performing live with, uh, let's say, Ableton Live, and maybe translating that over eventually, when you understand that, translating that over to, to stuff like this. Uh, but yeah, just getting some kind of a controller like the one I have here, or even like a keyboard, like uh, I have one of these uh, smaller controllers, has a keyboard, has some knobs, some buttons, some sliders, like getting a simple thing like that. And or even uh, this is very popular these days, like a grid of buttons, right? A whole bunch of just buttons that you can use to just trigger different samples, you know, just do finger drumming. We have different classes on that, like finger drumming, live looping, labs. So, so yeah, these are all great starting points. Um, and then slowly kind of work your way up to a little bit more advanced thing with, with things like the gloves. Right, fantastic. Um, yeah. You know, could you talk a little bit about the electronic digital instrument? Because this is, I think, an, isn't this an area that you're really involved in, right? You're, you're, you're training these musicians that are coming in to use a, a setup um, in, in a live performance setting or in a studio setting as a creator. Um, can you talk a little bit about what EDI is and, and how you are involved in, in teaching those students? Absolutely, yeah. So. Um... EDI is a principal instrument now. What that means is, so at Berkeley, if you want to join in uh, Berkeley, you need to declare a principal instrument. That instrument could be guitar, voice, piano, drums, or EDI, electronic digital instrument. Now, what is an electronic digital instrument? Uh, it is kind of open, but it generally has three components. There is a computer, computer like some kind of a laptop, or desktop computer, or <laughs> um, which will run some kind of software. That software could be Ableton Live with Glover or just Ableton Live or Logic or in any other software that you prefer. Uh, and the third component is a controller, some kind of a controller, either one controller or a variety of controllers. So in this little performance I did, my controller or controllers are the gloves and this device over here. Yours could be a keyboard controller and something else. Or it could be the, the button controller like the launch pad or you know, it could be a combination of those. So that's usually what is EDI. So Combining these three things, you can now perform in an ensemble. You can play chords, you can play drum parts, you can you know, play melodies, you can be part of a, a group and, and perform music. So that is something that's kind of new. <laughs> I think we're the first school to do something like this. Um, it is, uh, it, it's, it's interesting, right? So over the past, we started in 2018, I believe, so it's been a while. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, this year, um, the presidential scholar. So there's a pre there's a thing known as presidential scholarship where a student gets like full scholarship, completely paid to attend Berkeley for the entirety of the program. One of the students is an EDI principal, which is pretty amazing that uh, some someone that plays something like this that's brand new is has now been given in um, a presidential scholarship. So so yeah, in terms of um, mastery on this device we're working towards that we have students who are kind of new to it and they're kind of learning how to get there but do we also have students who are amazing at stuff like this who are, who are performing uh, with confidence and playing with all these instruments and creating really really be beautiful music um live yeah so that's that's the whole edi world that we're uh, in right now that's awesome that's incredible to hear 
And, and you, you mentioned earlier, and I think this is where I met you, you're, you're a guitarist. This is what you're, you started playing. How did you, could you talk just a little bit here? And then we have a question from somebody, but um, could you talk a little bit about how you went from being, how you added on your, your experience of being an electronic musician starting as guitarist? So it's, like I play trombone, but you know, how do you go from being, you know, quote, traditional instrument, and, and then going into this whole world of sound design and technology. Um, yeah, absolutely. I don't know what happened. I, I guess I just stopped sharing my screen. All right. Um, well, to the easiest answer is life happens, <laughs> right? You just go along. I, I never, like 10 years from now, I didn't have a plan. All right, I'm going to do this i'm gonna get a pair of weird gloves that i'll put on my hands and i'm gonna control music life not at all i <laughs> ne never was a plan um it just you know things happen you just go in a direction or yeah like for me it was just that uh when i first started teaching at berkeley none of this was a thing which is just like teach classes production me my main background is in teaching production electronic music production teaching how to produce music with you know these different programs uh, synthesizers modular synthesizers and stuff like that uh, but then when we decided to do the EDI thing, I kind of got into it and I kind of felt like, oh, you know, I, I used to play guitar. That was kind of fun. Let's get back into that. And my experience of performing live with um, a traditional instrument like a guitar helped to to do this as well. Right. So even though it's not literally the same thing, you know, you're still performing. So, you know, th those um, the, the, the years I spent you know, <laughs> sitting in with a metronome playing the, the major scale, minor scale, all the modes helps. You still kind of retain that and somehow translated to a completely different um i guess domain or paradigm like this so yeah it just it just happened and uh i guess yeah i can't give you a better answer well, than that oh that's great that's cool to hear <laughs> um juan carlos you you had a hand up first why don't you jump in sir what's your question yes thank you um let's say you have a gig um a live performance and um you would like to switch between the gloves in a bass or a guitar or probably you explained it but but i'm not sure can you turn the gloves or the controller like just pressing the button right in the gloves or you need to do another process um now when you're saying switch over um you, you don't have to switch because because you can i've had i've done performances where i'm playing the guitar and i have the gloves on right so i'm okay. combining both so I'm not treating it like, oh, I'm going to do a guitar performance and then afterwards I'm going to do all this glove nonsense. No, I'm just like kind of combining it together as one performance. But yeah, if you want to, you can do that as well. You can, okay. there's a switch over here. I can just turn it off. In fact, there was once, <laughs> so it runs on batteries. I'll tell you the story, inside story for like the 50 of you. <laughs> uh, once I went on stage and so I, I keep it off because the bat battery could die. Yes. Uh, so I thought I'll just keep it off. And then the the show was like, I forgot about it. I had to go on stage really quickly. I started performing and I realized the gloves are off. <laughs> 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 and I was like, okay, okay. But I didn't start, I don't start with the gloves. Like the okay. performance I did earlier, I didn't start with the gloves. I was just playing some guitar. So I was like, I was noodling along and I'm trying to play a note, press, press the on switch to turn it on, turned it on. And then uh, I could continue playing. So yeah, so you can turn it off, but it's, completely not being used and then turn it back on when you want to use it okay yeah. it, but, but but for example if you want to just go quickly to your guitar and play something and i mean the daw you don't want it to recognize like this movement oh, so the guitar that, you do it with the button here or so that's actually a very good question i need to explore that most because that does that is a bit of a problem okay. so um so let's say you do a lot of like the chord example I give you had so many different gestures. That's quite a lot. So even if your hand moves a little bit you and you're playing guitar, it, it might trigger that. I tend to avoid combining stuff for that. Yes, that's that is a bit of a problem. So um, I what you can do. So in the I'll share my screen again. In Glover, I haven't explored this as much, but there are um, you know, I said there's solo and mute buttons. So what we can do is we can mute the information that is being generated by this. So not turn it off because you know, I, I don't want to turn off the entire thing. Just mute it briefly and then do my guitar playing and then unmute it to, to let it do its thing. Yeah, that's a really good question. That's important because then you're just randomly just generating these messages when you don't want to. Thank you. Great question, Juan Carlos. Yeah. Andreas, you got a question, sir. Your hand's up. Jump in. Okay. Um... 
I am interested in how many or do you know any musicians or DJs that use this device to perform live or I, I want to see how a lot of people use it and make uh, yeah. yeah absolutely I can I can give you some examples it is very new so there aren't that many famous people oh, actually I can I can tell you also oh, Imogen Heap the person who started this obviously she uses it uh, if you don't know if Imogen Heap check out Imogen Heap really beautiful music um, definitely worth um, uh, exploring her music British uh, singer songwriter producer performer Grammy award winning uh, uh, artist Im Imogen Heap yeah it's in the chat there um, another person um, on the Mimu Gloves website uh, I'll just share my screen in a second Mimu Gloves dot com you will see they have some examples here there's this one artist named Shagal she uses it so she's like a there's this person so she's mm -hmm. a singer songwriter and she's kind of like a dancer as well so she combines dance oh. with with music uh, using the gloves so she's yes. another one and probably That's the cool. most famous person who has used the gloves is ariana grande you probably have heard ariana of grande yeah. oh. <laughs> so uh, if you just Google uh, Ariana Grande, Mimu Gloves, you'll see one of her live performances. She was using it. That's amazing. And was it hard to, to adapt into this device? It was challenging or it was uh, easy? It, it is a little bit because it's new, right? It's like I'm moving my hand and music is happening. What's going on, right? So, so you have to, uh, it's, it's fun. It's like really, I would it's so amazing if you all could try it out because it's a completely different experience to see someone do it versus you know you uh, doing it yourself maybe you should tell your folks there to invite me uh, bring the gloves along and then we can do a in-person demo <laughs> um but yeah it's it, when it's new you have to like practice a little bit also the the annoying thing is a setup like right now i showed you i did i showed you one little example you have to go through all of that for all your songs and test it out and then sometimes there'll be problems. There was once that I was doing my performance and it wouldn't happen. I'm doing the, the hit gesture. The sound would happen like like there's a delay. Well, played and then it came back later. I'm like, what is going on? And I'm middle of the performance. I can't like stop and excuse me, folks. I have a technical problem. I can't do that. So I had to go with it. I had to kind of improvise and uh, thankfully everything else worked fine. So yeah, so it can be kind of troublesome, but I guess it's like any instrument. If you're new to a guitar and you put on a stage, you're like, oh my God, what do I play? I don't know any chords, but you spend more time, learn the instrument, you'll feel a bit more comfortable with it. So I guess it's just like any other instrument, spending time, you know, with it a little bit. Okay, I imagine, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Andreas. So we're at the top of the hour. It's been fantastic um, to see you work with this technology and just kind of you know, demonstrate what you've been able to accomplish, um, you know, with your knowledge of sound design and then with movement and what you're able to do. It's going to be fantastic to see this in, you know, in person when we can actually get together. Um, so what I'd like to do, ladies and gentlemen, please, you know, in addition to what Rashab showed you here, you can go to his website. You should follow him on social media. He teaches. There's online courses that you can check out as well. Um, uh, Rashab, are you going to be doing any of the summer programs this year? You might be teaching in Boston doing a summer program or two, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I so, do, yeah. Yeah, I will be. For those of you that are looking to come to like the five-week program maybe or, or, you know, actually, isn't there an electronic production and design yeah. conference coming up? Yeah, in a few days. No, no, not a few days. <laughs> a few months. June, early June. Yeah. June 5th, what is that going to be called? Uh, connect with a K. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Connect. So um, our, our, music, our electronic production and design department is going to be doing a conference and um, incredible faculty members there as well to check out. But um, we're also job, doing man. a week long workshop, um, electronic production and design workshop. Uh, that's also happening in the summer, though, though that's, I think, geared more towards high school students, if I'm not mistaken. That happens every summer. And Jason right. knows about that. Yeah. And then, as we've noted, we're, we're trying to figure out how to get you down to Mexico City. Yeah, I've never been to Mexico. I can't wait to go there and <laughs> eat real burritos because I, I eat burrito every day. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's Boston good, burritos. But, you know, just Boston burrito. Hey, man. <laughs> no, no, gonna, that's nothing. <laughs> we're going to show you some tacos. It would be great to have. Yeah, these. exactly. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah Boston, Boston tacos are. Yeah. <laughs> 
But um, you know, I just want to um, have you jump in, Fernando. Um, tell us about what other activities do you have going on this week for um, Semana Rec? Well, uh, we are almost at the end of the week. Uh, we had today a lot of activity. We had a, a, a guy from that won a, an Oscar doing some uh, presentation about sound design. Uh, and tomorrow we will have uh, just wait because I have the program here and I can't see it. Yeah. Near, right? What? We have a near Felder on guitar. Oh, near Felder. Yeah, we yeah, yeah we have near Felder. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have near Felder. And what else, Juan Carlos? Because I, I can't see right right now this the program here. Um we have a near Felder and I think that's it, isn't it? Let me check, let me check really fast. Uh, we have a, another teacher uh, at 1 p.m. Uh, and we have we have some programs about uh, wellness. We have had some uh, uh, people coming uh, uh, talking about wellness. So we have a wellness uh, conference as well at 3 p.m. And another at 5 p.m. And we'll end our Semana Rec at 7.30 with an open mic session. And that's it. Great. Incredible. What a what an incredible event you've produced. And it's really wonderful that uh, Rashab, you were able to join us. And we really appreciate your time. And uh, you know, everybody just to be here. continue to stay creative, stay connected, follow um, Rashab online. Be sure to um, follow us at, at Berkeley Espanol to learn about more online activities. And, you know, if you have questions about Berkeley, you know, you can go to um, global, pro global programs, I think is what it is, global programs at berkeley.edu and Ray and Chris Dallas and I will answer any questions that you have. And, you know, hopefully we'll see you in person, get to play some music together. All right, cool. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your time. Fernando, as always, it's wonderful to see you and wishing everybody at REC all the best. And uh, Rashad, man, thanks so much for this. This was super cool. <laughs> thank you, thank you, gracias. Yeah, cool. congratulations, Rashad. Great, thank it you. was great, thank, thank, you. thank you. All right, everybody, take care, take we'll care. see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you, it was awesome, bye. <laughs>